Welcome to the first video on the vector data model. It's one of the two major ways that we can represent geographic features or phenomena in a computer system. And if you've been following along with my introductory geographic information systems course, then you've already used data in the vector data model. That's what you've been using when you were learning about projections, coordinate systems, and creating basic maps. If you've ever added a shapefile into an ArcMap project, then you worked with vector data. The data model itself is rather simple. It fundamentally consists of three different things. The first is geometry. In the vector data model, every feature has a geometric representation. Second, it includes a data table, also called an attribute table, which stores all of the information other than geographic position that you would like to store about your features. This is where all of the aspatial tabular data is held. Third, it consists of a link between the geometry and the data table. So the geometric representation is linked to the data in the attribute table. And that's of fundamental importance. If you take a look at some of my earlier videos on geographic information systems, you may remember that I showed you how I had the geometric representation of all of the countries of the world, and then also lots of information stored about them in the attribute table. I could select some geometric representation of the country's territory, and then directly find out which row in my data table was associated with that geometry. And I went the other way around as well, when I looked up data in the attribute table, and was able to find the associated geometry. Then we looked at doing some very simple queries with the computer that were based on those principles. So the idea of linked geometry and attribute tables shouldn't be completely new to you. And it's a simple concept, but one from which a tremendous amount of power can be derived. I want to take a look at both the geometry and the data tables in a lot more detail. So first, let's take a look at the geometry. Whenever you think of the vector data model, you should think about points, lines, and areas. These are the three geometric representations that we can use to represent some geographic feature or phenomena using the vector data model for two-dimensional GIS analysis. So at the moment, we're talking about two-dimensional space, such as that on a flat piece of paper or on your computer monitor. It's very common to do geographic information systems analysis in two-dimensional space. Each of these representations has a specific dimensionality. A point is a zero-dimensional geometric representation. If you think about a point in two-dimensional space, it doesn't have any length or width. It's just established by a set of coordinates, such as latitude and longitude. A line is a one-dimensional representation. It has length, but no width. Typically, lines are specified by two different points, or nodes, and then the connection between them. Third, we have areas, which are two-dimensional geometric representations. If you chain some lines together and have them end at the same node at which they began, then you have an area. I'll bet that if you look at a map and check out all the different features that are represented on the map, you'll see lots of points, lines, and areas. You've probably already practiced some basic symbolization of vector datasets to create some basic maps where you probably experimented with the symbolization of points, lines, and areas. Before I talk about these representations further, I do want to give you a couple of alternate terms here uh, so that you can become familiar with some terms that you often see in particular commercial GIS software packages, such as Esri's ArcGIS. First, it's very common for people to refer to points, lines, and polygons, polygons instead of areas. Technically, as far as GIS theory is concerned, the term that we want to use for two-dimensional feature representation in the vector data model is an area. However, we do see this word polygon very frequently used in the software packages. Technically, if you think back to your middle school and high school courses in geometry, and think about the technical definition of a polygon, it should be clear that we may want to represent geographic features in two dimensions in ways that happen to not conform to the technical definition of a polygon. According to geometry, a polygon is a planar figure that's bounded by a finite chain of straight line segments, closing in a loop to form a closed chain. Certainly, there may be lots of geographic features that we can represent in this way, but it immediately rules out something as obvious as a circle. We may certainly want to represent some geographic features as a circle. Some of them might certainly be circular, but technically a circle is not a polygon. Further, if we used curved lines of any kind, then we're technically not creating polygons. But nevertheless, in many GIS software packages, they continue to use the term polygon to also include geometric representations of this kind as well. 
And to further complicate matters, it also happens to be the case that some GIS software packages cannot technically store curved lines anyway. So further, when it looks like you have curved lines, if you zoom in very, very close, you'll actually see that they have many, 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 many very short straight line segments. So that may be important to keep in the back of your mind, but when you're working with many commercial GIS software packages, you may see this term polygon instead of the more correct term area, and maybe for many practical applications, uh, the differences between those two won't affect you very much. But even though there is technically a difference uh, between a polygon and the more general term area. Also, you may see this term polyline. Technically, the difference between lines and polylines are simply the number of segments that are used to make up the line. So a line that goes from one node, also called a vertex, to another vertex is technically a line, but then if you have a single line that is made up of more than one line segment that goes from vertex to vertex to vertex to vertex, then technically you're looking at a polyline in the situations where these two are going to be distinguished. So if you see this term polyline in a GIS software package, then that's what it's talking about. By the way, I'll also mention that we can move into three-dimensional analysis. For the most part, we're going to be talking about uh, conducting our GIS analysis in two-dimensional space, but I want to make you at least aware of the three-dimensional geometric representation. We can represent geographic objects in three dimensions with a volume. Volumes are the three-dimensional vector-based representation. As with areas and polygons, volume is the technically correct term in GIS theory for three-dimensional vector representation. However, in some GIS software packages, you sometimes see this called a multi-patch. This has to do with legacy reasons in certain software packages. I believe it actually comes out of some computer-aided design programs where they call the different faces of the volume a patch, and then several of them are joined together to create the volume, so they called a multi-patch. But the history there isn't important. What you need to realize, for our purposes here, is that when you see the term multi-patch in a GIS software package, it's referring to the volumetric vector data representation. I'd like to make one final point here, and that's the one thing that GIS data representation has a rather hard time with, and that's representing a single object with a combination of geometry types in a single data file. When you're creating a GIS vector data file, you're going to have to choose what type of geometry that file contains, and once that's set, it's going to be set forever. You're not going to be able to change that. And you're also not ever going to have a single GIS data file that contains, for example, both points and lines. One geometry type per data file. So when you're considering what type of representation that you want to use for any particular feature or phenomena that you're trying to represent in your GIS, you're going to have to choose one geometric representation, or you're going to have to use multiple vector data files to use a combination of geometry types. And that's an important thing to keep in mind, and we'll touch on that again uh, as we move forward.